Hey, what's up, SBC Next Gen? Listen, we are in week three of our sermon series, Untangled, where we are untangling the seven focuses of entanglement, anxiety, attitude, bullying, depression, image shaming, peer pressure, and stress. Now, if you remember it all seven by now, then shout out to you. Um, so we are un uh, untangling the seven focuses of entanglement. And today the word is coming from my main man, Pastor Charles, as he will bring the word on this morning. And hey, I'm in my car right now because I got to let y'all know that I got to fasten in my seatbelt for this word that Pastor Charles about to preach. So y'all need to put on y'all seatbelts because, hey, it's going to be a smooth and bumpy and amazing ride with this word that Pastor Charles is going to bring. All right. So let's join in prayer as we welcome Pastor Charles. Lord, we thank you right now uh, to be able to be gathered here today. Although we are not together, Father God, Lord, that is not limit what you are able to do, Father God. Uh, we may not be gathered together physically, Father God, but we are still connected, tied, and entangled in a good way spiritually, Lord. Um, we thank you that uh, we are able to worship, that we are still able to uh, praise you, that we are still alive, well, healthy, and everything may not be going our way, Father God, but it's still working out in our way, Father God. Um, Lord, we just thank you, and Lord, we pray that you order the words of Pastor Charles, that you put a mighty word in his heart, that you anoint his heart um, um, with a special word that will just bless the youth, Father God, on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope y'all got y'all seatbelts on. Hey, let's get it. <laughs> Greetings, shalom. Happy Sunday. Pastor Charles here. Back in front of you guys one more time. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited about being able to be in the space that we're in. I'm so excited about what we've been doing thus far for our Untangled series. I'm excited about the fasting. I'm excited about our um, helping hands for the Nicholas House. I think we've been doing a great job this Lent season. And I just want to give you all a round of applause for participating every Sunday, um, showing up for the Zoom calls and the prayer check-ins. Guys, it doesn't happen without you. So... This week, um, we've been dealing with being untangled. I want to talk about something of how to dodge a certain thing um, when it's thrown at you. Um, sometimes, right, what I found out, the people can give us and give off a certain thing, and you can give off a certain thing, and it can affect everybody around you. What am I talking about today? I'm talking about attitude. Sometimes your attitude can affect someone else's attitude. And when your attitude affects their attitudes, you can lose gratitude. <laughs> but I know that's that's a lot. Uh, but we really want to talk today about your attitude and how to dodge an attitude and how to dodge it when it's coming at you. So sometimes it hits you so fast, boom, it hits you right in the face. But how do you dodge attitude? And because I want to talk about let's dodge an attitude because it's simple. You can be fine, but the wrong attitude coming to your space can put you in a bad place. And now you have a bad attitude because someone brought something to you. But all I'm trying to tell you, child of God, this morning, we got to learn how to dodge it. So today's sermon, dodging attitude. Dodging attitude. And if I would put like dot, dot, dot and having gratitude behind it. Because you got to be glad the attitude didn't kill you. Well, I know I'm, a, I'm ahead of myself. So today's uh, scripture, today's lesson comes out of 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. I know you're looking for my Bible. I got my Bible right here, buddy. Where's your Bible? <laughs> All right. That's cool. Google it on your phone. Put it in your, your chat. Whatever you have to do. 1 Samuel chapter 18. I want to lift verses 10 and 11. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand and it, and it, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the, he cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided it out of his presence twice. I know. Uh, King James Version, it comes at you a little differently sometimes. So this is really what happened. All right, this is the new Prescott International Version. It came a day 
and David was playing his harp as usual, and Saul had an evil spirit come aboard him, um, at that bad, funky attitude, and he picked up his javelin. He said, hmm, I'm going to throw the javelin, and I'm going to pin David to the wall. And David dodged it twice. Now, you see what we're saying, dodging that attitude. Can you imagine having a spirit thrown at you? Now, I know, y'all, I know, I know, I know. You're saying, Pastor Charles, uh, he had a spear thrown at him. Yeah, he had a spear thrown at him. Remember, Saul and David in these days, they were warriors. Um, so having a javelin around was nothing. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, somebody having a pistol, having a knife in 2021. It's picking one up and just throwing it. It's nothing. So Saul picked up this javelin, this, this spear, and said, I'm going to throw it at David. And David said, oh, no. You like that thing? He said, oh no. So he threw the he threw his attitude at him. He said, oh no. And David dodged it. But David wasn't done yet because Saul had another one. He went, Whoa. and he said, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. He was dodging the attitude. And here's why it's so important, child of God. This is why you have to dodge certain attitudes. Um, because I will talk about it in a in a biblical sense of what it meant when David really dodged the attitude. Saul wasn't just throwing the spear at David. Saul was throwing all the hate he had, all the jealousy he had, all the all the stuff that was going on. You know, when David was this warrior, David hadn't have killed um, Goliath, and there was a song, you know, Saul had killed the thousand, David tens of thousands. Saul has killed the thousand, but David tens of thousands. Right? Something so stupid, so small, something so meaningless, it affected the way Saul felt about David because now he was jealous. He had an attitude of jealousy towards David, and he had a sense of, you know what? They think he all this and they think he all that. I'm going to pin him to the wall with this spear. Can I tell you, though, when he threw that spear at David, how many of you really want to bet he wasn't just trying to pin him against the wall? Right? Big facts. Um, he wasn't trying to pin him against the wall. He was trying to kill David. And Saul was, he had been a warrior king. So he done, he's killed people before. He's thrown a spear before. He didn't throw the spear like, ah. No, he tried to kill David. And David said, oh no. <laughs> and he dodged it. But here's the key. David, after he dodged it the first time, oh no. He went back to playing his heart. Like nothing happened. <laughs> he played it like nothing happened. And then the spear came in again. Went, oh no. And he went back to playing the heart. He dodged attitude. And this is why dodging attitude is so important. Attitude can be thrown to destroy you. Attitude can be something thrown at you to take you off course. It can stop your joy. It can stop what you have going on. Attitude can stop your blessing. Attitude can pull you out of the things you're really supposed to be doing. Like David, he was blessed with his heart. He was supposed to be working in the house of the king. That was his job. You know, go fight, go play the heart, calm the king. The king had a bad attitude because he had a sense of some sense of meanness had come over him. And he threw the spear at David. And David said, not today. Oh, no. And yet, and still, he didn't throw the attitude back at him. He just dodged it. And because he was able to dodge it, he was, he was able to keep going unbothered. And that's all we're trying to say. Why you have to dodge attitude. Because when he dodged the attitude, child of God, he was perfectly fine. If it had killed him, if it had hit him, it pinned him to the wall, then he would have had to deal with something else. What if the spear didn't kill him, but it had already hurt him? He had put him in pain. Instead of sitting there fighting with attitude, he just, oh no. He dodged the attitude. And that's what we have to do, child of God. But to be able to dodge the attitude, you have to be watching and be aware of what's going on around you. What you just say, that's right. To dodge the attitude, you got to be watching and be aware of what's going on around you. I promise you, if David were not, was not paying attention when that spear came hurling at his head, not once, but two times, he would have died. 
But because he was paying attention, he was able to go, oh no, and he dodged the attitude. He dodged the spear. It was so much hatred behind that spear. It was so much jealousy behind that spear. It was so much evil intent behind that spear. It was so much sin behind that spear. It was so much attitude behind that spear. But David dodged it, and because he was able to dodge the attitude, he was able to keep playing his harp. Not a long sermon today, but that's all we want to tell you is you have to start dodging the attitude. Dodge when people are throwing that stuff at you. Yeah, I mean, completely be unbothered by it. What would have happened if it would have hit him? It would have knocked him off course. It probably would have killed him. It definitely would have affected how he was dealing with his daily his day-to-day situations. It would have affected him at that moment. And who knows what he would have did at that moment. If he'd have let it affect him at that moment and the spear would hit him, he might have took the spear back and killed the king himself. And we all know he shouldn't have did that. But because he was able to dodge it and move out of the way, he was able to continue to be unbothered. And that's all I'm trying to tell you today, child of God. Just learn how to dodge it. You got to be paying attention and learn how to dodge it when it's coming towards you. If you see somebody having a bad day coming to you already, hey, how you doing? Whoop, get out the way. If you see they're talking to you, they're bringing some noise to you, uh-huh, I appreciate it, uh-huh, whoop, get out the way. Because sometimes the attitude ain't got nothing to do with you. It's just something that was in them already. If you look back at verse 10, an evil spirit from God had came on had came upon Saul. Now Saul had been doing some mess on his own, and God had already been turned turned his turned his back on Saul. And Saul was getting his heart hard and all the other stuff because he he disobeyed God and God was dealing with him. So an evil spirit was already on him, but the evil spirit didn't say it came on Saul to be mad at David. He just had an evil spirit come on him, and he projected his evil spirit off at David. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say sometimes the attitude that people have. Has has nothing to do with you. I'm going to just sit there with that for a second. I'm drinking my water. I see it. Sometimes the attitude that people has has nothing to do with you sometimes an evil spirit can just come over them sometimes child of god you don't know what your friend is going through you don't know what the fool in the store is going through you don't know sometimes even what your parents are going through when they have an attitude with you you don't know but you can't let it affect you it said the evil spirit came upon saul it didn't say the evil spirit came upon david saul had his own evil spirit that he had to deal with he began to project his evil spirit and his bad attitude out towards someone and someone could have received it, but he chose to say, oh no, he dodged it. Dodging the attitude. It's so much blessing when you able when you're able to dodge the attitude it's so much more to get when you dodge the attitude it's so much better when you raise above where everyone else is going i'm telling you man don't get caught up in a long text chain with people don't get caught up in fussing and cussing and stepping out your religion with people don't get caught up with with dudes who who you brought with you play ball with girls you hang with play ball with work with whatever don't get caught up in their bad attitude and their 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 badness and their mess because sometimes the mess they have has nothing to do with you but you can end up taking that stuff personal and when you take that stuff personal their attitude can affect your attitude and you can lose your sense of gratitude and if you lose your sense of gratitude you just lost your blessing <laughs> don't lose your gratitude because of your attitude Know this, that yes, people come mad. Yes, people may bring stuff to your front door. Yes, people may come to you and, and they'll have something that had nothing to do with you, but they'll put it out on you. And sometimes, child of God, we just have to be that, that person that receives mess off of somebody. I'm not saying just lay down and take it, but I am saying you can pick and choose what fights you want to have. I know. 
Pastor Charles gave me some lessons today. You can pick and choose what fights you want to have. And sometimes you will find out when you get bright enough, smart enough, and realize you can pick and choose what type of fights you want to have. Guess what? You'll find yourself not fighting that much. You don't pick and choose. You don't. David knew that Saul was the king. So what sense did it make for David to fight the king? You know your parents are the rulers of the house. What they say goes. So what sense does it make to fight your parents? You know the teacher at the end of the day has to last say so about the grade. So what sense does it make to fight the teacher? You know the football coach, the basketball coach, the dance coach, the cheer coach. Every people, all these people. If they get the final say so, if they are an authority figure, what sense does it make to throw back the attitude at them when you could just say, oh no, and dodge it and keep moving forward? The problem comes, shout to God, the problem that's going to be a hang up for you, and I promise you Pastor Charles is dealing with it himself. I've been in it myself, and I promise you it won't be the last time. It won't be the last day. It's going to be something I'm forever going to deal with until the day I die. Is Sometimes I have to realize that I need to keep my mouth, yes, Shut. Sure. Sometimes I just not need. Sometimes I just don't need to say anything. And every 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 action doesn't require a response. Every mean attitude, every hateful thing given to you doesn't always require a response. Because let me tell you something. As long as you're living, you can do everything right every day of your life, and you're still gonna have people hate on you. Boy, let me tell you something. I'm preaching up here today. I don't care if you with me or not, uh, SBC Next Gen. I'm preaching today. I don't care if I'm preaching to you today, somebody tomorrow, somebody five years from now. I'm telling you, every response that every attitude somebody gives you, you want it doesn't it doesn't have to have a reply from you because that reply you give them back, if it's not a reply that's set in the spirit of God, you. You don't want to regret saying something because the thing about words, yeah, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. That is a bold face lie from the pits of hell. Words do hurt. And sometimes, child of God, sometimes, child of God, sometimes, child of God, you can say something. It'll be so hurtful. And remember this, once you say it, you can't take it back. Once you throw the spear, you can't take it back. It's once you throw the spear again, you can't take the action back. Once you ball up your fist and you knock them out. You can't take it back. Once you say something out of your mouth, you cuss at them, you fuss at them, you say something, you pick on them, you can't take that stuff back. But if you say, oh no, and you dodge it, there can be hope to work it out. Hope for, for to reconcile some things. And even if you can't work it out, with that person. That person may be having something and they may be dealing with God in their own way. Like Saul right here. He was dealing with God in his own way. God had to put an evil spirit on him. So he was dealing with God in his own way at that time. And because Saul was dealing with God, David had to know that there was nothing he could do with it. But get out of the way. Because the fight wasn't against him. His fight was ultimately against God. And he just projected that on David. So David had enough sense when he saw the spear come at him and say, oh no, and get out of the way. When you see the attitude coming, get out of the way. When you see the fussing coming, get out of the way. When you see people talking about you coming, get out the way and dodge it. Dodge the attitude. Because their attitude can give you attitude and you can lose your gratitude. And if you lose your gratitude, you can lose your attitude. What that mean? I can lose my attitude. That means you might not make it into heaven. And that's all I'm saying today. Short sermon, to the point. You got you to gotta dodge attitudes, guys. People are going to bring it to you. I don't care what you do for a living. I don't care how old you live. I don't care the type of day you're having. I don't care if you're the greatest person to somebody. People are still going to have attitudes with you. And most of you guys are teenagers. You wake up with attitude and don't know why you got an attitude. It's just going to happen. It's something you can't do away with. So attitudes are always going to be here. 
Learn how to dodge them. You do yourself a big favor, I tell you. David did himself one. Because he dodged the attitude, he was able to live another day. Because he dodged the attitude, he didn't do something he regretted doing. Because he dodged the attitude, he didn't get angry and throw something at throw attitude back at uh Saul, aka or hindsight another spear and kill the king. So I'm Pastor Charles, guys. I'm done. I just want you guys to dodge the attitude. Just dodge it. See, we ain't just untangling it from ourselves. You don't take it from everybody else's business too. So when they're throwing their attitude at you, if you choose to catch it and reply back to it, you just get yourself caught up. But if you say, oh no, you're fine. Look, Pastor Charles, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks for checking in today. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait, we got to pray. <laughs> All right, let's look to heaven. Dear God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for what our, our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen, Father. Thank you, God, for anointing the space and the place, such as the time as this, Father, to, to express to you, God, how much we love you. Thank you, God, for decreasing the, the old preacher man and increasing you, O oh, Father. Lord, we pray that your word went out and went forth this, to, on this Sunday, God, and it touched whoever it needed to be touched this morning. And God, we love you and we praise you. So God, we ask you as we go about our way this week and, uh, and continuing our series of being untangled, continuing through our Lent season, just learning how to dodge the attitudes that people throw at us. But God, I also ask that we watch the attitude that we throw at people. Um, and God, just stay with us and keep us, oh God. This is my prayer that you watch over every youth attached to Salem Bible Church. Look over them and their families. God, we love you and we praise you. We'll be so careful, Father, give you all the honor and all the glory because you deserve it. God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I'm Pastor Charles. I love you guys. May the Lord watch between you and me until we meet again. Shalom.